Today, we're talking more about hiding data in plain sight. So let's say you're regular users and your data is about to be collected and you want some of the files to be never found or you, the content of those files you want never to be looked at. Well, knowing what we know about legal support right now, what can we do to make those files uh, invisible? Now I'm not talking about actually like deleting your files or moving to external thumb drive and moving it somewhere. You want to make sure the file stays where it is, that you could still use it, and at any point of time, if the discovery happens and files get copied over, people who are looking at the data will miss something. Now I made two more videos on this topic, and today I want to make to add a few more items to my list. So that's what we're doing. All right, the first item I want to talk about exploits weakness of Office 365. And I had experience exporting data from Office 365, and I noticed that it doesn't like large files. So you get these errors, which says either file too large or request timeout or something like that. And basically, large files do not get exported. And, well, that's where my idea came from. Why don't we just use large files for whatever we want? Let's say you have a password list. You can just put the passwords on top in first, you know, whatever number of characters, and the rest you can just pad with blank data. And now you have a giant file that stores very little information, but if somebody were to go and export the data out from Office 365, it's probably going to time out or show some kind of error, or maybe the file will be over the limit of some sort, and it will never be exported out. And no one checks export error logs from Office 365 Okay, well, maybe some people do, but the thing is, there is nothing you can do about it. If you get an error or if there is some kind of problem in export, I haven't found a solution to actually get those files out. They just erred out, and that's all. There's nothing you can do about it. And I'm trying to ask people, you know, who used it more, and I don't think they have an answer either. So if you know what to do about all these crazy number of errors you get when exporting data from Office 365, you know, let me know. I would like to know what people are doing about it because number of errors is actually really high. And if I were to do an export like that from Relativity, for example, that would never pass any kind of quality control standards. But when we export from the web portal, you know, eh, whatever exports, exports, so pff, fine. Uh, so that's gonna be my one item, uh, large files. We, we're exploiting weakness in Office 365 because it doesn't like them, and we're intentionally going to store data in very large files. And hell, you can just rename it to, you know, mp4 or something like that just so people think it's a video file or whatever. And the next idea I had is when I was dealing with viruses. So we were doing this export for a client or import, I don't know what it was, but uh, we were working with some data and extracted text folder was getting flagged by an antivirus. And I thought, what's going on? Why would extracted text be flagged for that? You know, why there no viruses and extracted text? How could that be? So I started poking around and kind of examining what's going on there. And I found that those files have um, JavaScript extracted from like malicious emails, from phishing emails, maybe some spam websites or whatever. But there was a bunch of JavaScript in those extracted text files. And that gave me an idea. Why don't I take some of that text that is malicious JavaScript, put it on top of my text file that I'm trying to hide, and right below, I'm going to put my legitimate text that I want to hide. Maybe my passwords, my bank account numbers, I don't know, whatever, whatever evil things I'm doing and I want to hide, I'll just put it there at the bottom of that uh, evil JavaScript file. This way, this file will get flagged by an antivirus software. People are just going to say, oh, it's a virus, has been excluded, and then they move on. A question may be on your mind, but isn't that dangerous? You're going to be playing around with viruses and your data. Well, JavaScript viruses aren't the real viruses. Uh, so in order to actually run that JavaScript, uh, it's going to be pretty difficult. It has to run in a specific environment, having other prerequisites, you know, probably with some HTML code and all kinds of stuff. So it would be pretty much impossible to run that JavaScript, even if you tried, uh, let alone accidentally have it infect you somehow. So it is just a piece of clear text that you copy and paste in, in random places. And because the antivirus could be so sensitive to that, it will trigger the virus warning and file will get skipped. And there is no way you're going to get infected because you're not actually running that JavaScript. And like I said, you will not be able to run it accidentally. You'll have to put a lot of work in even to try to run it. And even if it does, it's probably going to come up with all kinds of errors and stuff because the underlying HTML is missing. So 
I would not worry about that. The next thing you're probably thinking, well, isn't that like illegal to do any of that stuff? Well, I don't know. Uh, the reason why I'm talking about it is this is more of a mental exercise, is we taking what we know about e-discovery and thinking of different holes that exist that other users could exploit if they knew the industry. So is it okay to do or not okay to do it? That's not up to me to decide. But this could be an interesting mental exercise and it also could be something that we can do to improve our process and make sure things like that don't slip through the cracks. Though not too many people will care about how much more effort it takes versus what they can actually get from it because normal users aren't actually gonna do that. So those are my items to add to hiding data in plain sight. If you can think of any more, put them in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow on LinkedIn, subscribe on YouTube, and I will see you in another video.